conjugal visit that is happening. Because we watched Season 7, Episode 2, The Postponement. Now, when George said that, I believe he said, I can tell you that's happening. He didn't say that's happening. I think he said that's happening. Yeah. I can tell you that's happening. I don't think he said I can tell you. I believe he did. Play the tapes. And is he foreshadowing being sent to prison? Whatever do you mean? (laughs) Okay. Hello. Hello, Katie. Hello, Derek. How did you like the postponement? So, on the one hand, I laughed out loud numerous times. Mm. On the other hand, I didn't like it. Mm. A lot of what Jerry was doing was filler. I guess I guess it was filler until Kramer spilled the coffee on him, because I feel like that's going to be a thing. Uh-huh. You didn't know about that thing? No. I mean... <laughs> uh. Right? But, like... Every every bit with Jerry just didn't seem to add anything mm. until, you know, until the Kramer coffee thing. He was a little bit of a, like a secondary character in this yeah. episode. But I did write down, I like Smug Jerry. You do like Smug Jerry. <laughs> Maybe you just like Smug. Smarmy George. Mm. Smug Jerry. So the postponement was written by Larry David and uh, directed by Andy Ackerman. It aired on September 28th, 1995. Vulture.com ranked it as the 145th Mm -hmm. uh, best episode. Screen Crush ranked it as the 149th (sighs) best episode. Uh, So somewhat in cahoots. Yeah. Did you like it? Um, No. Well, no. (laughs) Um, IMDb gave it a ranking of 8.2 out of 10 and ranked it as the 104th best episode. That's uh, IMDb I don't understand because... They're in agreement with Screen Crush and Vulture, but they ranked it an 8.2? Yeah. What's the worst ranked Seinfeld episode? Would you like me to look that up? Maybe for next time, but I'm curious, is there a, is there a floor there, on this thing? So one thing I did look up after last time is I wondered what the best episode in Season 7 was. Mm-hmm. Um, so I took the spreadsheet that I have for all the IMDb ones, and I didn't look up... Uh, on Vulture or Screen Crush. This is just solely IMDb um, to find thinking that it might have been the engagement. It's not the engagement. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also the postponement is not the worst season seven episode, at least according to IMDb.com. Mm-hmm. I still don't need to say that .com. It's implied. So will you tell me what the best and worst are of season seven? Do you want to wait for them? I feel like we're going to forget. <laughs> the Soup Nazi is the best season seven episode. Okay. And the Friars Club is the worst season seven episode. So who were the guest stars? Is this Elvis Costello as the rabbi? Elvis Costello is not the rabbi. Kind of looked like Elvis Costello. Um, The rabbi was played by Bruce Mahler. Originally, the character was named Rabbi Kirschbaum after Bruce Kirschbaum, one of the Seinfeld writers. However, when he returns for subsequent episodes, he's referred to as Rabbi Glickman. Oh. Uh, He was in uh, Dick Tracy, Friday the 13th, The Final Chapter, Police Academy, Police Academy 2, their first assignment, Police Academy 3, (laughs) Back in Training, Police Academy 6, City Under Siege. It's the worst one. Do you, uh, you've watched the Police Academy? None, no. None? <laughs> None of them. The only, Not the only reference. one. No, the only reference I have to Police Academy is from Community. When Troy said they watched the Police Academy movies, the last two. <laughs> How do you know who Steve Gutenberg is? The Stonecutters made him a star. Because he was in the last two Police Academies. <laughs> I don't even know if that's true. Uh, the other guest star that I thought I would mention was Kelly Perrine, who played the usher that escorts Kramer out of the movie theater. Mm. He was in Night Squad, uh, one-on-one, and what I recognized him from was the Drew Carey show. 
uh, where he played like the head of security for the department store that Drew Carey worked at. Um, and the line that he says that I will often repeat is drugs are not the answer. Unless the question is, what is not the answer? In which case, the answer is drugs. I've never heard you say that. You should ask me about drugs more often. <laughs> Let's throw it back to last week when I asked you, do you remember this episode? I'm really overwhelmed. I don't want to get married so soon. Blah, 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 blah. Well? I think I brig- begrudgingly got it. Not begrudgingly. I think I unconfidently got it. I think you imitated George yeah. crying. Yeah. So you know what this is about. I mean, we got to go through some other stuff, but what is the timeline on this yeah. episode? So George is like frustrated enough with the engagement that he wants to postponement, postpone it, but he hasn't seen Elaine since getting, since engaged. getting engaged yeah. and they're seemingly friends. Although I assume all of them see each other every single day. Yeah. Um, so maybe a couple of days has passed. But it's not but it's not only like maybe like it's not only like that Elaine hasn't seen George. Jerry and Elaine are also like he t- he asks her like, "Oh, we haven't really talked about George getting." Yeah. So he tells her when they're wearing the same colored shirt, which I think is after I don't use a clothing-based time <laughs> system. So you're going to have to give me some other uh Well, it was in the first episode of this season, mm-hmm. but he has changed from when George told him. So it's like the next day. What shirt was George wearing at the time? Don't know. It was the the plummy colored shirt. They Jerry and Lane wearing the same same shirt. In the first episode? In yeah. like se- uh first episode of the season? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So then at least another day has passed because they're wearing yet different clothes. Well, you don't know that. Maybe they spilled mustard on their shirt and did an outfit change. Both of them. Uh it was a big bottle of mustard. <laughs> At minimum, George has been engaged for two days. At maximum, let's be generous well, and say a week. I think longer than that because there was, yeah. How could how could Elaine not see George for more than a week? He's hard to miss. Um, yeah, it, it, it doesn't. There, maybe because a man wrote this, he can just be like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like the joke where you know a, a husband and wife are chatting, and the man's like. Bob and Susan split up. She's like, what? When? Why? Like, I don't know. Um, like three months ago? <laughs> Why? I don't know. Didn't ask. Yeah, exactly. I'll read the synopsis. George gets stressed about engagement. I didn't write full sentences. Hang on. <clears throat> George gets stressed about his engagement. Elaine's rabbi has loose lips. Kramer spills hot coffee on himself at a movie with Jerry. It's not her rabbi. It's true. She is not of his faith. One of the like notes uh, in the synopsis synopses for this episode I read was like Elaine confirms she is not Jewish, which we did not know up until this point. Which I mean is fair, but I hadn't thought about it. Yeah, same. Um also I mean a Mexican Jewish person. <laughs> so, I mean, she did dress as like the angel Madonna to visit the priest in his cell, right? I don't think that was on purpose. It was a raincoat, but I think the angel Madonna was wasn't she Jewish? I mean, I guess the mother of Jesus was Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, what that, I'm trying to say is that tracks. <laughs> she treats talking to a rabbi as confession to a Catholic priest where they're not supposed to share what you tell them with anybody unless you've committed a crime. Yeah, but also just like kind of uh, to a person with like normal social cues. I wrote down, does this rabbi have trouble reading social cues? I wrote down, why does this rabbi talk like a conehead? <laughs> yeah. So he's he comes back and he's this weird Again? Yep. Oh. Uh, Vulture.com explicitly said that he brings down the entire episode. Why does he have to be so stilted and weird? I don't know. I was I was thinking you could you could not change like 
I, I don't know whose choice it was. Yeah. Did the like, actor come in and do like a couple of different rabbis? And they're like, that one. And like, I, the I could emotionless hear, one. I could, I could take the dialogue in my head and hear what a normal sounding, even a normal sounding Jewish person. Ooh. You normal wanna... sounding Jewish person. You, you just. You a Jewish trying... person who sounds normal. Okay. <laughs> Who sounds like other Jewish people. <laughs> so uncomfortable. <laughs> uh-huh. A person who is still Jewish and also normal sounding. Okay. You could use the same dialogue. Yes. They didn't need to sound like a conehead. Yeah. He did not maintain low tones. He told everybody. I assume so uh I'm 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 not uh I don't practice the Jewish faith. Mm-hmm. I assume if you go to a rabbi seeking counsel, mm-hmm. there's some uh, semblance of confidentiality. I don't know. Is there? I have no idea. We'll have to do a corrections and omissions about that. I yes, mean, please tell us. What's the expectation? They don't have confessional booths, I think. I don't think his apartment counts as a confessional booth. Don't get caught diddling kids as much as Catholic priests, I think. Almost very nearly zero, as far as I know. It's almost impossible to do it that much. (laughs) Maybe cut that out. (laughs) No, no, it's warranted. So, to the beginning of this episode. Dog problem solved. (laughs) The rabbi has asked the woman to keep the dog inside. Great. In the um, synopsis of... Season 7, Episode 1, they talked about how uh, Episode 1 and 2 feel like a two-part premiere. Like, this feels very much, like, linked to the first episode. What about Episode 3? Because you said Larry David wrote them all at the same time. I don't know. We'll have to wait and watch Episode 3, and then we can make that determination. There's no stand-up at the beginning or end of this one. Very rare for a pre-Season 8 episode to not have stand-up. Oh, so in season eight, there's no more? Uh, No, I think it's just more common. Okay. Uh, It starts on the fake street with Mm -hmm. a fake produce stand with three foot tall celery. You immediately asked me, is that produce fake? It was comically large celery. It was easily the length of my arm. Kramer's parking his car. Some average size cucumbers. What what was the whole point of this opening sequence? Oh, the 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 smashing of the car thing? Yeah. And then Jerry and Elaine going like, "Well, he's in." Like, what what was the point of this? So It's just like th- a this weird non sequitur. Th- it became a weird non sequitur. What I think they were trying to get to was uh the whole dynamic of like Kramer would like turn Jerry in, Jerry would okay. like not rat on Kramer. Gotcha. So you see Kramer like smash up the car as Jerry doesn't tell anybody, you know? Kramer sneaks in a cafe latte. Jerry immediately rats him out. Cafe latte. Yeah, they said it weird. So this I think was my first ever hearing of a cafe latte. Yeah. So did you go around saying cafe latte for a while? No. That would be weird. Yeah, like pronouncing bagel, bagel. It's a perfectly acceptable pronunciation of that word. No, it isn't. You worked at Great Canadian Bagel? Great Canadian Bagel. See, you said it right there. Great Canadian Bagel. Nope. Nope. You said it right. I have a cold. <laughs> so George is talking to Susan about the bathroom stall doors. I will never understand the toilets in this country. We just came back from overseas. Mm -hmm. We were in Japan, Mm -hmm. where the doors go to the floor. Amazing. The doors go to the floor in every single bathroom. There are public bathrooms in every train station, every subway station. There's, There's public bathrooms just on the street. All of them have a delightful talking toilet that washes your bum. Mm-hmm. Why can't we do that? We'll never get there as a society. 
All I really want is doors to the floor, really, and no gap. I've seen doors to the floor. It's rare. It's rare, but more often oh, you the, get... Oh, the gap. The gap is the worst. Because <laughs> nobody... Like, I, I think you're... If, you're, if your legs aren't obvious, the next thing people go to is the gap. And then you get that, like, eyeball. Yeah. And you can see so much when you're just walking by a half-inch gap. Mm-hmm. You can see a full person sitting on the toilet. You don't even, you don't even need to see anything yeah. wider than it's, that strip. It's, it's, it's a... You it's, know what they look like. angular perspective. Yeah. Angular perspective. The gap at the bottom is irrelevant compared to the gap between the panels. Perspective. Am I saying that word right? Yes. Okay. Um, think about a really fancy bathroom. Like you go into a bathroom and like oh, yeah. each each stall is its own little room. The door goes to the top and to the bottom. It's a real door with a latch. Yeah. Man. I tip better in those restaurants. What we need is a toilet uh, finding app. <laughs> Tells you the best public restroom anywhere in the city. I bet that exists. I think it does in New York. Mm, let's start it here. And Susan is not interested. She wants to change the subject. So then we get this little bit of a weird voiceover, which I know you're not a big fan of. And uh, George says to himself, toilets were the subject. Yeah. We don't even share the same interests. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My interests include toilets jo- and talking about toilets. George's interests are complaining. And he just oh, wants fair, yeah. he wants the subject to run out of its own momentum. Well, I mean, no, nobody wants when when you're complaining about something. Nobody wants the person you're complaining to to side with the other party. Nobody wants yeah. uh, Susan to side with the toilets. <laughs> exactly. But she basically is. She's like, this isn't an issue. I'm not talking about it. Mm-hmm. If you if you are interested in the person. You'll get on their complainy train and you'll complain together and you'll get mm-hmm. all worked up and then it, it forms bonds. Yeah. Shared trauma. Yeah. She probably blasts out the door open. <laughs> <laughs> Did she move in with him immediately? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That nice apartment where he ran to? It's yeah. Gone. She moved into his tiny apartment that has a habit trail? What is it? What is it uh, Did you notice, like, so when he's standing by his window, I guess? Mm-hmm. There was like a neon turquoise tube, and I th- and later when there was a wider shot, there was I think there was like a habit trail. Maybe she brought it. What is a habit trail? Oh, it's like a th- it's like a run for hamsters. Oh, with like tubes and and rooms and stuff. Hmm. I wonder if it was there before. I doubt it. I don't think George would have a hamster. It doesn't seem like the type. No, I like that the the set deck, or. Larry David was like, Susan definitely has a hamster <laughs> and has brought her her habit trail into George's apartment. So Jerry suspects that Elaine is jealous because she won't talk about George's engagement. I would suspect that she's uh, jealous and upset because she's day drinking. She's crushing buds and then literally crushing the cans. Badass. This is so weird. Like, there's, there's not a lot of drinking on Seinfeld no. in general. She's just like slurping back Budweiser, slinging him over her shoulder like a hobo. I wrote down, badass. He calls her Lainey, Mm. but she doesn't call him Jerome, so she's not in the mood for Mm. fun fun teasing. Shenanigans? No. George is so, so pleased with Jerry agreeing with him about, uh, one, the toilet doors, two, postponing the wedding. He, He praises him and says... Even if you killed someone, I would not turn you in. Kramer comes in. Jerry asks him, if I killed someone, would you turn me in? He goes, oh, yeah, immediately. Would you turn me in? I think I have to. I'd be an accomplice. If I murdered someone, you wouldn't turn me in? Oh, no. It would be immediate. Exactly. I need to protect protect our daughter. (laughs) I mean, there's the the metaphorical, if you needed to hide a body, I would help you. Yes. But if you really needed to hide a body, I would help you, but then I would turn you in. Mm. Wouldn't just, like, leave? You would help me and then turn me in? That's worse. That's subterfuge. No, I would help you. It'd be like, well, okay, you're already trying to hide this body, but I would tell you, I'm going to turn you in. 
subterfuge. Well, you'd probably murder me. Why too. would you? Why would you? Why would you? Why would you help me hide it and then turn me in? Because I'm processing things. If you're like, I need to hide a body. I'm like, okay, maybe you didn't kill it. I don't know. But then I would probably turn you in. Hmm. I trust you implicitly. I mean, all women who live with men do. This is evidence. This I'm, is just, on the I'm just saying, statistically, <laughs> if you're murdered, it's most likely going to be me. <laughs> like, in aggregate. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't say when. <laughs> Um, Should we cut all this out? Are snack oil cookies really fat free? How does that work? I don't know. What were we watching where they kept bringing out snack wells? I've never had one. I've never seen them. It was like a. It was it was snack wells a uh, like a, a product line of the Keebler Elf, or were oh, they a different thing? I don't know, but it was, it was a diet cookie. How do you make a fat free cookie? You Terribly. Need, it's going to be awful. I'm need sure. some kind of fat, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's held together with like, I don't know, chemical bonds. Most things are. <laughs> you know what I mean. Some some xanthan gum or something. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was that? Is that, that was the sound my, that your was ass my, makes? That, that was my reaction to <laughs> <laughs> after you have a snack little cookie. <laughs> uh, I made that sound with my mouth. It was a. <laughs> That's a Mike Wozniak. Pushing out a hemorrhoid sound. <laughs> Gonna go check myself. <laughs> Taskmaster deep gut. Um, what are, what are we talking about? Snack wells, fat free cookies. What are the ingredients? No, 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 no. It's, a, it's, a, it's for next episode. Okay. So we had a little bit of a throwback to the Chinese restaurant. Mm-hmm. Planet Nine from Outer Space. Plan Nine from Outer Space. Plan Nine. I also wrote planet, and then I had to mm. scratch out. There's not nine planets in the solar system anymore. Kramer's been drinking cafe lattes since the fifth grade. And we get a whole bunch of George and Susan asking each other, how was your day? And how was your day? It's a prison. So in the cafe, when Jerry predicts that it didn't work out for George, <laughs> without George saying anything, there's the couple at the next table, and the man is... Saying something disappointing to the woman and while he's still eating. And they're they're watching him admirably. Like, how is how is he doing this? She's crying. And George goes and shakes his hand and says something to her. I forget what. So two two notes from me. That woman, I mean, I didn't really see her face because it was in her hands, but it looked like me. Red hair and a huge green sweater. Mm. <laughs> it's like looking in a mirror. Um and I really liked the switch of George being the crying one in the mm. relationship and not the callous one. So I know you said that he was like crying and freaking out, but I didn't put it together in that moment in the cafe. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'm giving you too many spoilers by telling you that I remember the episode. I'm gonna stop I'm it. Gonna stop. Let me guess. She cried. You caved. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm very sorry, but I'm not going. You gonna finish those fries? <laughs> that man could not act. Looked kind of like a doofus. Yeah. So, do you think a a latte that you bought more than twenty minutes ago could be that hot? No. No. The coffee was too. A hot. latte that he was drinking in line. Yeah. Latte that had the top removed. Important point. Um, oh. I'm and saying. then uh, reattached and then shoved into his pants. Into his underwear, I guess? It was like, I think like he shoved it into his like waistband. Into his, like, waistband yeah. like it was a sword. Uh, fun fact, during the scene where the coffee spills all over Michael Richards, he injured one of the extras with his like flailing. flailing? Oh, yeah. yeah, I believe it. See, I didn't like it because it was too... Kramer physical comedy. Mm. Elaine's overcompensating. She's when she sees George, she's hugging him, she kisses him on the cheek, she's overjoyed for him. And then he really rubs salt in the wound and says, like, you know, if you ever date anyone, we should double date. Mm -hmm. She's going, Yes, 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 yes. Oh, well, there was that man on the fifth floor that you liked. Yes, 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 yes. Meanwhile, Rabbi's spilling the tea all over town. 
on his talk show. Using their real names. Their real names. And George was wondering if he could go to a prostitute while engaged. He wasn't wondering if he could go to a prostitute. He wondered if it constituted cheating. Oh, because just for research <clears throat> purposes. You know, in Japan, going to a prostitute when you're in a relationship isn't considered cheating. No? No. Oh. By most people. Foreigners excluded? Well, probably. Why? Why? Um, cause it's like, it's, it's just sex. It's not a relationship. Like the relationship is the thing. Mm. It's- mm-hmm. Well, you know, you make, you know, world-class toilets and then you do some other stuff that balances it out, I guess. Mm. So George has cried, successfully postponed his wedding and he comes to Jerry's, he opens a can of Pringles, and he dumps them all out of the tube into a bowl. That was weird. That's not how you eat Pringles. No. That was wild. You gotta make your hand into, like, a, a small thing and pick them out, like yeah. a... Like a... You gotta pass the tube around. Like an ostrich head. They go in the bowl, your hand goes in and, like, crushes all of them. hmm You have to pick up, like, a perfect stack of two or three to crunch them all at the same time. Mm-hmm crazy person it also seemed like he was the only one eating them yeah he could have just sat down with the tube messes up a bowl that's all i had for the episode um kramer's overjoyed that jerry has ratted on him Mm -hmm. because he talked to a lawyer and we're gonna assume for millions so i assume we hear about this again perhaps all right well uh what's up next week episode three is the maestro maestro elaine dates the maestro okay it's a dirigenka uh, who wants to be referred to as the maestro. I'm sorry, it's a what? Dirigenka. <laughs> Your Ukrainian is impeccable. So I have some uh, corrections. We talked a lot about Mad About You last week. But yeah, we failed to mention there was a revival in 2019. I didn't know that there was a revival in 2019. There was. That's all I know. Oh, maybe that's why there was like a weird... 11th season? Maybe. Um, and Okay, so I, I tried to research this weird laptop that showed up at my house and then disappeared. Oh, yeah. And I said that you could look up things at the library. So there was an article I found about the Toronto Reference Library that mentions a service started in 1994 called MetroCat. And that became something else in 96 called Word World View. It was a dial-up service that had the library catalog, internet sites, databases, and resources. Mm. The only reference I could find to MetroCat and WorldView was this article. But it proves that I did not imagine things. <laughs> there was a way to access the library catalog from home. <laughs> Unless you just imagined this article as well. Ugh. That's all. Well. Well, good night and bon appetit. Bye. Believe it or not, this is our podcast. Please subscribe at the end. If you subscribed, we would be happy. Please subscribe to us. Believe it or not, it's our podcast. Is that a Seinfeld reference?